Welcome to September's Leco Challenge. This problem is called expression add operators. Given a string num that contains only digits and an integer target, return all possibilities to add the binary operators plus, minus, or multiply between the digits of num so that the resultant expression evaluates to the target value. Here with the num string 1, 2, 3, we can see we have two answers. We can either multiply 1 times 2 times 3, or we can add 1 plus 2 plus 3. Now, we don't need to have these digits to be single single digits either. We can do 12 plus 3 or 12 times 3 for that matter. Or we can even have the entire number, 1, 2, 3, to see if that would equal our target as well. So the first thing I think I'm going to do here is I want to start solving this step by step. And let's first try to find all combinations of our digits that we can calculate here. We'll put it into, a, into an output. So what I'll do is first I'm going to calculate n, which is going to be the length of num. And we're going to write a depth for search function, okay? What I'm going to pass in now is the starting starting index, the start index, as well as a list of every single digit that we've seen so far. So I'm going to have a list uh, so far. So we'll start off with this. What I'm going to do is pass in the i, as well as, let's call it so far, being some sort of list. And what we're going to do is say if i is mm, greater or equal to n, let's print our so far just to see if this is working and then we'll just return now what we're going to do is say for j in range of i to n let's see we want to call our defer search we're going to add plus one uh, wait do we need to do that i guess so j plus one here as well as pass in so far plus whatever string is going to be calculated here in the digits. So here we'll say num, we'll say from i, that's going to be the starting index, to j. We're actually going to have to add one here. And let's just see how this looks. First, I just want to try this out and we'll see what happens. So say that we had an example one, two, three. We should return, these are the different combinations of, combinations of numbers, right? We can have one, two, three, one, twenty-three, twelve, three, or one, two, three. So this is working. What we want to do now is figure out how we could each one of these each one of these lists has to have like a plus, a minus, and a multiply. So there'll be like a plus, minus, multiply, and then for two there'll also be a plus, minus, multiply. Uh, so to do that, what I'll do is uh, let's say we're going to pass this into a list. So I'm going to do like I'm going to add two items here, one for the plus one for the minus and one for the multiply. And one thing to note is we don't want to do that for the very first number. But the very first number we add, we're just going we're not going to have a plus in front of it, right? So I will say, look, if not so far, if there's nothing in so far, then we will just do that for search, j plus one, and we'll pass in so far plus this, but no expression. And actually, I don't even think we need to pass in so far. We're just going to do that. Okay, otherwise, pop this. Okay, so it would be something like this. And let's look at what our output look, would look like. And and this, this looks right, right? We have 1 plus 2 plus 3, 1 plus 2 minus 3. And these are all the various combinations that we can have with all the digits that we've uh, contained. Okay, so the very first thing we can do here is, well, we can probably just do brute force and calculate using the eval function to see if this equals to target. Um, but that's going to be very inefficient. Rather, what we'll do is pass in a extra variable to calculate what our result calculated so far is. So if it was all just pluses or minuses, what we can do is just add 1 plus 2, that would be 3, and then pass it along to the next one, 3, 12 plus 3, whatever, that's 15, and just keep passing that around. And at the very end, we'll check here to see, is our result equal to the target? And if it is, we'll add it to some sort of output. So what I'll do is create an output. We'll say, pass in, uh, let's call it result. And we'll say, look, at our base case, if the result equals target, let's add this string into our output. So what I'll do is append our so far, but I'm going to do a string join here. Do string dot join everything and so far. 
but that requires us now to add, uh, figure out what this result is, right? Uh, so the first, first thing I guess we'll do, well, let's ignore multiply for now. Um, if it was just plus or minus, all we have to do is, well, result plus, let's calculate the candidate, I suppose. We'll call it mm, candidate equals let's see, num i to j plus one. And if this candidate, if there's nothing here, we just pass in the candidate. Otherwise, we say result plus, I guess we'll make this into an integer. We'll say integer candidates. For minus, we'll say result minus candidate, right? And I guess just to prove my point, we'll print the result, we'll print this so far, as well as the result, right? For everything, we'll print right here. Okay, so if just plus and minus was, was available, what would it look like? Um, plus bar, plus minus, minus, oh, right here. Results starting with zero. Okay, it would look something like this, right? This would be six, one plus two plus three. This would be uh, zero, one plus two minus three. And that looks right. One minus 23 is negative 22. But what about multiply? Uh, see, the issue with multiplying is, say that we had something like 2 plus 3 times 2. If I was to calculate this just in order, what, I, what would happen is I would say 2 plus 3 equals 5 times 2. That's going to equal 10, right? But that's not the answer here. We would actually need to first multiply this one. The order of operation says multiply. That can be 6. And then we add 2. So that would be 8. So that means we're going to have to keep track of the previous value that we stored in case it's a multiply. If it's a multiply, what we'll have to do then is take our result, subtract the previous value, and then multiply it with our current value with that previous value and add it back into our into our result, right? Okay, so that means I'm gonna have to calculate one more thing. I'll pass in the previous, and the previous here for, for the first one is just gonna be candidate. Everything else though, here we'll say previous is candidate, here it's gonna be negative candidate and here this is where it gets tricky we want to first get the res result subtract candidate and add back the candidate times previous and we want to pass in candidate times previous it's going to be the previous right so here first previous is going to be none and that should be it so let's see here Okay, so that looks like it's working. Let's see, 1 minus 2 is going to be 6. Oh, I'm sorry, it's going to be 6. Nope, it's not working. Okay, my mistake. I made a mistake here. Let's see what I did wrong. Okay, it's not candidates. My previous, duh. Okay, let's see. Yeah, there we go. So this would be... 2 times 3 is 6, and then 1 minus 6 is negative 5, right? So that looks like it's working. Um, now all we need to do is return our output once we're finished. But there is one edge case that we actually need to worry about. Uh, say that we had something like 1, 0, 0. What happens with this algorithm is it's going to count these double zeros as well. And that's an issue because this technically shouldn't count. This is not, this is not a legitimate number. Okay, so what can we do about this? Well, what we'll have to take care of then is zeros are okay. We just can't have zero zeros. So if we get into this loop and we find that the starting number, our index number is zero, then we only want to run this thing one time. So at here, at this point, we'll say if, let's see, num of i, if it equals zero, then let's break out of this loop because we only want to do it for the very first zero. We don't want to count every, anything else after that. It doesn't matter if it's like zero one or zero two or zero zero. The leading zero makes it all not legitimate, right? So, so here, as long as we break after the first loop, it should take care of that here. And looks like it did take care of that, right? All right, so let's go ahead and submit this. Okay. And there you go, accepted. So time complexity wise, it's gonna be, well, we have four paths that we can go on. So it'd be four to the nth power. And I believe 
it should be 4 to the nth power. It might be 4 to the nth squared. But I, I don't think so because appending this list should be just a 1. So I'm pretty sure it's 4 to the nth power. And that's it. Yeah, so this is a very difficult problem. It, it definitely took me some time and, and some uh, different approaches to get this here. But ultimately, um, I like this solution the best. So I'm going to stay with this one. All right. Thanks for watching my channel. Remember, do not trust me. I know nothing.